Tucker, uh, what do you have there? Hold on, I'm almost done. That looks a little scary to me. I mean, should we maybe evacuate the building? No, no, no. This isn't for here. Although, now that I think about it, I'm really glad I took the necessary precautions. All right, uh, would you mind explaining to us what you're doing? Oh, of course. This feat of engineering genius is my latest iteration of a system of intricate locks, retinal, and biometric scanners, and of course, duct tape. Well, oh boy. Uh, what exactly is the purpose of that contraption? Isn't it obvious? Um, no. It would be, it would be if you lived in my house. Melissa, here's the thing. My parents are super old school. I mean, like, ancient old school. They insist I do things like shower more than twice a week, brush my teeth, and share my stuff with my friends when they come over. Can you believe it? Um, that all sounds pretty normal, actually. Um, I appreciate their insistence on good personal hygiene, and sharing your stuff with your friends doesn't sound too out of the ordinary. Uh, yeah, unless they want you to share your limited edition comic superhero action figures. Actually, that sounds like a great thing to share with friends. Isn't it more fun to play with your toys with other people? Toys? Toy Melissa! These are not toys! These are limited edition comic superhero action figures. Okay. Well, that doesn't really change anything. Locking up your favorite toys, I, I mean limited edition comic superhero action figures, doesn't show your friends kindness. It also doesn't show humility, which is what we're trying to teach the kids about this month. Um, hello. Not talking about those guys out there in the audience right now. We're talking about me and my huge problem that I solved with such incredible skill and genius and humility. Wow. You know, um, I thought you could help me talk about humility today, but I think we need to try a different route. Have you ever heard of the book, The Rainbow Fish? Um, uh, maybe. Can you remind me? Well, this is a story of a fish who, like you, wasn't very interested in sharing something special to him. How about I read the story and you listen along with the kids and we'll see if you pick anything up from the story. Okay, I'll do that, but I'm holding on to my well-secured box of limited edition comic superhero action figures. Deal. A long way out in the deep blue sea, there lived a fish. Not just an ordinary fish, but the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. His scales were every shade of blue and green and purple with sparkling silver scales among them. Oh, beautiful. The other fish were amazed at his beauty. They called him Rainbow Fish. Come on, Rainbow Fish, they would call. Come on and play with us. But the rainbow fish would just glide past, proud and silent, letting his scales shimmer. One day, a little blue fish followed after him. Rainbow fish, he called, wait for me. Please, give me one of your shiny scales. They're so wonderful and you have so many. You want me to give you one of my special scales? Who do you think you are? cried the rainbow fish. Get away from me. Shocked, the little blue fish swam away. He was so upset, he told all his friends of what had happened. And from then on, no one would have anything to do with the rainbow fish. They turned away when he swam by. What good were the dazzling, shimmering scales with no one to admire them? Now he was the loneliest fish in the entire ocean. One day he poured out his troubles to the starfish. I really am beautiful. Why doesn't anybody like me? I can't answer that for you, said the starfish. But if you go beyond the coral reef, to a deep cave, you will find the wise octopus. Maybe she can help you. The rainbow fish found the cave. It was very dark inside. 
and he couldn't see anything. And then suddenly, two eyes caught him in their glare, and the octopus emerged from the darkness. I have been waiting for you, said the octopus, with a deep voice. The waves have told me your story. This is my advice. Give a glittering scale to each of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the sea, but you will discover how to be happy. I, I can't. The rainbow fish started to say, but the octopus had already disappeared into a dark cloud of ink. Give away my scales, my beautiful shining scales. Never. How could I ever be happy without them? Suddenly, he felt the light touch of a fin. The little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please don't be angry. I just want one little scale. The rainbow fish wavered. Only one very, very small, shimmery scale. He thought, "Well, maybe I would miss just one." Carefully, the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and gave it to the little fish. Oh, thank you, thank you very much! The little blue fish bubbled playfully as he tucked the shiny scale in among his blue ones. A rather peculiar feeling came over the rainbow fish. For a long time, he watched the little blue fish swim back and forth. With his new scale glittering in the water, the little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing. So it didn't take long before the rainbow fish was surrounded by the other fish. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right, and the more he gave away, the more delighted he became. When the water around him filled with glimmering scales. He at last felt at home among the other fish. Finally, the rainbow fish had only one shining scale left. His most prized possessions had been given away. Yet he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish! They called. Come and play with us. Here I come," said the rainbow fish, and happy as a splash, he swam off to join his friends. Well, Tucker, what do you think? Did rainbow fish show humility? I guess so. What's wrong, Tucker? It's just that the rainbow fish gave away his scales. Yes, he did. At the beginning, he was only thinking of himself and didn't want to share. He <clears throat> put his scales in a carefully locked box, so to speak. I got it, Melissa. By locking up my toys, I mean limited edition comic superhero action figures. I was thinking to myself first, and not about my friends. Yep, you got it. Locking up your stuff and keeping it just for yourself may seem like a good idea at first, but in the end, it's bad for both your friends and you. I mean, it's hard to have fun and make friends if you don't have things to enjoy together, and it sounds like your figures would be really fun for friends to play with. If you gave up keeping them just for yourself and let your friends play too, you might actually get more than you give. I never thought of it that way. I think you're right. But Melissa, I have a new, bigger, huger problem now. What's that? I'm so amazing at locking things up that I think I might have even locked up the keys in this bad boy. <laughs> okay, Tucker. Well, let's go find some bolt cutters. Oh, I'll bet I'm awesome at using those too. Yep, probably. We'll keep working on the humility thing. 